Friends, please use this video to remind the women in their lives that they must be able to defend themselves because nobody else can. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts in the US. Here we're going to see a 37-year-old woman who is minding her own business and going for a jog. And then in a moment's time, she's gonna be forced to defend herself. This is just a beautiful day with the traffic going by, friends. And, and you can see here, it's 7.30 in the morning. Everybody's out for their morning commute. And what we're gonna do here, we sped it up a little bit at the beginning, but we're gonna zoom in to see a little bit better this woman jogging down the street. And, and it's kind of hard because low resolution at this point, because I've zoomed in. And this guy saw her jogging and just decided that he was gonna pull over and he was going to assault her. And he gets out of the car and he is going to run across the car and accost her and grab a hold of her. And you can see him push her back into the bushes there and into the front yard of this house. Now, one of the neighbors said that she heard it and she started screaming out to help her. And you can see this guy in the pickup truck kind of stops and, and hesitates there like, uh, should I help? Should I step in? Now, thankfully, this woman has some serious guts and she gets that guy off of her. And now he is going to run back to his car because I think she hurt him a little bit. You can see him limping a little bit there. He's going to get in his car and try to drive off, but the police are going to find him just a little ways later. And he has multiple really serious charges on him. Thankfully, I think the woman made it through with only minor injuries. And that is where this one is going to end. Boy, that one was scary, and it reminds us that every woman needs to be able to protect herself. If you appreciate the lessons that you get here at Active Self Protection every day, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a one. I wanna think about some significant lessons out of this one, including having the attitude of self-defense. Why I recommend that women who jog in public have some kind of force multiplier on them and about stepping in as a bystander to help someone in need. So here we have just a normal day and you got to recognize that you're not going to get up and have that sense of foreboding. You know, there's no music playing like in the movies to tell you when bad things are about to happen. You have to be ready for them before that time comes. And this woman is just jogging down the road. And I know that there might be some people who would say, well, you know, women shouldn't jog in a sports bra and a pair of shorts or whatever. And to me, that's hogwash. She absolutely has the right to jog however she wants down the road and not be in fear of her physical safety. So we don't blame her at all for what happened here. However, if you are a woman, you must recognize that you are in a vulnerable population and you are more apt to be victimized by people who think that they have more strength than you, more size than you, and they can overpower you. And you have to take steps to protect yourself in that interim. And the first step that I'd really want to pay attention to is awareness. This woman's just jogging down the road, but when this guy just pulls over for no discernible reason there, you might want to stop a minute and go, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? If you were able to see him there and see some bad things coming up, if he's looking at you or paying attention to you when he shouldn't be looking and paying attention to you, then that might be your clue that instead of continuing to run into this danger that you would stop, that you would you know, divert your course and go down that side street or whatever so that you missed the opportunity or you got out of the danger zone. De-escalation, escape and avoidance is always your best bet. Now, as he gets out here and he is looking at her and he's obviously victimized her at this point, this is where I say I recommend that all women carry force multipliers on them. Now, of course, the most effective force multiplier against this kind of assault, sexual assault like this, is a firearm. And yes, you can carry a firearm on you while you are jogging if you are willing to do what it takes to do so. But even if you won't carry a firearm, a strong OC spray, I recommend Sabre Red, and I, you, know, I, you can get those in a small enough canister to run with. Something like that that gives you something stand off that you can get this guy off you, a taser or something like that. Now, once he gets a hold of her here, this is where I wanna say empty-handed skills are incredibly important. She didn't have a tool on her, and you have to be able in that moment to fight this guy off. And honestly, most women's self-defense programs are utter garbage. They teach a few canned responses and techniques that against an actual resisting opponent who is strong and big and wants to hurt you will not work. What it takes is it takes time on the mat. It takes an investment of two to three hours a week for a year in order to be proficient, but that's an investment that you can and should make. Now, this woman had a great attitude. She needed the skills to back that attitude up and a plan that said that I'm going to defeat this guy no matter what. Now, I also wanna talk about being a bystander here. You can see this guy kind of pulls over and he, and he thinks about what's going on and, and he's a good witness. And each one of us must decide 
mind, what incidents we're willing to step into and which ones we're not willing to step into. In other words, how big is your flock? Who are you willing to defend? And I think that's a very personal choice and you have to decide who you will defend and who you will not defend. For some people, they would jump right in here, no problem. For others, they would say, you know what? That's not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm gonna be a good witness. You better make that decision now so that you're not forced to make it in that moment. And, and for anybody, you gotta think about what is the best thing for you, for your family, and for your community. Now, thankfully, this woman had the skills to get this guy off of her. However, that said, this is still gonna have significant emotional trauma, a significant spiritual trauma, and those kinds of things. So thankfully, she did have the attitude, the skills, and the plan to get the guy off of her. And thankfully, he didn't complete his assault. I'm very grateful for that. But let's learn the lessons here of awareness, of having your tools on you, of making sure that you think about being a bystander and preventing this kind of thing or coming to someone's aid so that they aren't hurt in this kind of stuff. This lady did an adequate job of covering her asp.